there's nothing wrong with you. But the thing is, that's not what diet companies tell us. They tell us that by going on the diet, you're gonna become happier, more confident, you're gonna love your body, you're certainly gonna be able to do all these things that you couldn't do before because you're gonna feel so confident, especially it's really- I mean, that's true. Ask anybody that's had big weight loss or even lost 10, 15, 20 pounds, something light even as five or six pounds, people feel better because they're not supposed to be two, three, four, 500 pounds. And you know what? I understand that there's a lot of value in saying that you're perfect exactly the way you are, but that's only something you tell yourself when you're like 10 years old or you, you tell your child that, but even then it's very damaging because you're not perfect exactly the way you are. There's always room for improvement and you should want to improve. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that there could be something off about you. Like looking in the mirror and seeing a giant lump on your neck doesn't mean you're perfect. That means go to the doctor, you have something growing in your neck. That's the same thing here. When you look at yourself in the mirror, and you see a big protruding gut and you don't like it, it makes you insecure and you feel like you could do something about it, that's fine. You could walk more. You could eat more fruits and vegetables. You can actually go on a calorie deficit. And these things are very, very obtainable. And to sit there and blame this on diet companies, are we serious, dude? How much, how much of copium are you smoking right now to think that diet companies are the ones that are really the most malicious ones out here? When we have companies like Uber Eats and, and, and DoorDash, all these big companies right now that are like skyrocketing in the amount of revenue that they're making because delivery services are like literally everybody's on them right now. Like it, it, it's like the most lucrative thing right now. And you're sitting here complaining that Jenny Craig or some other fitness program, Gymshark, is making money off the backs of people losing weight. Let me tell you something. When you lose weight, what are we even talking about? Like a $10 gym membership and then like less money towards groceries because you're probably not eating out as much because you realize that eating out is really expensive and you're getting less value out of the food because most of it's just really, really high calorie food in general and you could make the same food at your house for less calories and cheaper. I don't even understand the point of this video, dude. If we're gonna be totally honest for a second, I'm sick of them saying it's capitalism because of the diet companies. Most of the time, it's not even the diet companies. It's literally the big corporations that are sitting there making you fatter to try to enable you to buy more food because if you're sedentary, guess what? You're not going outside to buy your food. You're waiting inside for that Uber Eats delivery, getting fatter, fatter, and fatter because you can't get up by yourself. And so it's like, an, it's like a negative feedback loop. You're just sitting there like an oral boros like a black man sucking his own cock and busting in his own mouth simultaneously because you don't want to realize that it's not actually the diet companies out of the evil ones here. It's the other people, bro. It's it's the, the Uber Eats delivery. And hey, there is time and a place for all this stuff. You can totally do Uber Eats. Fine, whatever. I just hope that when you're doing it, you're making the conscious decision to understand that these things are really expensive and there is a cheaper alternative, which is just going to the grocery store. And by the way, if you're one of these people that sits there and goes, oh, but like eating out is actually way cheaper because I did the math. I don't suck me off. Suck me off. Okay. If you're talking about like the overall cost, if you're going to like Wendy's and you're getting like a double cheeseburger and a fry and maybe a drink, guess how much that is? That's like 15 bucks. Okay. Go to the grocery store for $15 and you're probably not going to get as much food. But here's the thing. You can stretch that food out over a week and you can make multiple meals out of whatever you just bought from the grocery store. So I'm sick of people saying that and try to make this like, oh no, it's not as bad. It is that bad, okay? The food is gonna last you a lot longer instead of that one meal that you're eating. You can make like three meals out of that $15. I'm sick of people saying that there is a better alternative. It doesn't make sense to me. Stop sniffing on the copium. Go to the gym, walk more. Reinforce when you see these before and after pictures and you see the before picture of that person who was, uh, by the way, I really love before and after pictures. If you ever catch me on Instagram or if you're on my Discord, you know what? I should probably just set up a place for before and after pictures, honestly, on the Discord. But I would very much love to see your before and after pictures because I love seeing people where they started and seeing where they are now. And even something as simple as like 10 or 15 pounds, people would be surprised how much that actually shows up on the body, including the face. Like seeing the face thin down, seeing jawline, you know, it's, it's really crazy too because people don't register it until they lose that weight. And a lot of people don't realize their your face does hold a lot of weight. It's not just like you gain weight in your gut, thighs, boobs, whatever, that lower back, you got the big giant bubble back in it, whatever. You look like fucking bubble bath from, from SpongeBob. No, you gain weight in your face as well. So 
when you start losing some weight right you you'll realize that your jawline becomes more defined you realize that your you got more cheekbones maybe your forehead becomes more defined and that's really attractive for a lot of people like people like seeing very good character traits on a lot of different people so if you're sitting there thinking that you're ugly depressing looking and you probably think that you could do something about it you can you can 100 do that by the way you're beautiful exactly the way you are but make sure you understand that just because you're beautiful that doesn't mean you can't improve you can make yourself more resilient to the world you can make yourself more ability wise you can make yourself more 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 conduit what was the word i'm looking for you can make yourself more imbued into the world instead of expecting everybody else to change for you it's better for you to change for everybody else because what the fuck are you doing dude that doesn't even make any fucking sense things are made for people and you want to be a people don't you right but it's just like the, the, the these gross ideas of like before and afters because the way they're looking at it is because they're looking they're seeing it like okay before you're fat and because obviously you're fat and you're disgusting and you have all these like negative passive passive effects going off consistently like ticking above your head consistently like negative one negative one negative one consistently like your health bar that's why i like to think about being fat is like you have a health bar above your head and when you are fat the more weight you get it's like being over encumbered and your health bar is like slowly ticking down and maybe you have other passive effects like stench like maybe you walking around and you have the stench passive ability because anytime you lift up your armpits you hear the mm the fog noise from spongebob and because you're just perpetually smell bad and maybe you have like people growing in your belly button which i don't know how many times i've said this before it's very very common for people that are very very overweight to not realize that they smell extraordinarily bad they have the stench upon them at any given point in time which is is not a good thing by the way i don't want to be around people that perpetually smell bad and when you are fat you don't know it because you live like that for a very long period of time it's like people that live with their in their houses with the smoke detector that's constantly because they don't want to take down the battery and they just kind of get used to it which is terrible by the way get up on a step ladder and take that thing down it doesn't cost too much what are you going to get the batteries from the chinese dollar store for three dollars and you get like five batteries that thing dude the batteries literally last years i don't know how so many people literally just let those batteries beep for literal decades insane to me but regardless you know that when you are fat there are going to be issues with being fat and when you lose weight those things start to to dissipate obviously and it's a good thing that you have the before and after because a lot of people it's a very jarring thing to see where you were and you thought that you looked good at that size and then when you lose weight you realize oh my god i cannot believe how dusty how butter biscuited i looked here but look how voluptuous look how ah. Uh damn i'm looking good Ooh, i'm looking so good i'm looking real good here oh my god and you are looking good real good especially after all that weight loss looking so juiced up so spicy so lubricated you're looking tasty if i was a cannibal i would consider it but i'm not a cannibal and i'm looking at you as a human being an organism somebody that's very beautiful and amazing and doing spectacular things for yourself and people around you good job by the way you smell so good today Anyway, let's keep hearing about how it's fat phobic to take before and after pictures, as if that means anything at all. After pictures, and you see the before picture of that person who was uh, so, so sad, so fat, so horrible, such a bad parent because they were fat, so unattractive. Being a bad parent while you're fat is, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting idea. It, it, because when you're fat, I know when I grew up, okay, I didn't have a parent that was there that could play baseball. I didn't have a parent that could ride bikes. I didn't have a parent that could do certain things with me. And it was very sad because I was basically just sitting outside by myself, hoping that somebody would, somewhere would come up to me and play a game with me. And obviously, you know, stranger danger. So I couldn't even do that. So I was just sitting there in the dirt by myself. And it's really sad because I wanted to do stuff with people around me. And it just sucks that sometimes you, you have parents that are maybe you're older or maybe they're disabled in some particular type of way that just can't do those things for you. Why on God's green earth wouldn't you want to communicate with your child on a physical level because it, it just imbues so much in them dude it be better communication dude it, it forces them or not forces them but it, it encourages them to be more physically accolated into the world it's just like there's so much benefits and when you're fatter you can't do shit you're just gonna sit there and like oh yeah good job oh good job honey very good job bob could you come over here and play baseball with me oh baby you know i can't play baseball my knees be hurting you know how it is baby mm. Go back over there and play in that dirt like I told you to. Don't worry about mama. Mama gonna do what she gonna do. Mm. Right? That's what it's basically like. Like, you just like consistently letting down your child over and over and over again and it's really sad because like if you're like 50 or 60 years old and you have a child like okay I get it but if you're like 32 and your child is like 7 and you're over here literally just sitting down for 90% of the fucking day.
Get the fuck up, dude, okay? It, do it for your fucking child, okay? I hate it when I see fat parents leading... And by the way, yes! It's a negative thing for your kid to see you fat because it encourages them to be fat. And they see that you're okay with it, so they're gonna be okay with it. You're projecting it upon them, and they're gonna do it. You understand? And everybody knows this. When you're a fat child, you're fat for the rest of your life. That takes a lot of work to get out of your fucking... That is like a measurable amount of work as an adult to beat out of you. It's tough, okay? So yes, 100%, you should be incentivizing weight loss. You should be incentivizing, you know, in crew, it, being more physical, especially if you have children. I, it's just bad all around, dude, okay? Try to be more attractive through the realm of losing weight, 100%. Attractive, wearing probably like uh, raggy old clothes just to increase the effect of, oh yeah, they're so... They're so horrible. And then you see the after picture of them beaming with their smaller body and, uh, you know, presuming all of the wonderful things that's happened to them now that they have a smaller body. What do you mean presuming? You literally see benefits if you lose weight. And I guess it depends on what you deem as benefits because if you don't look at walking as a benefit or having less pain as a benefit or less stench as a benefit, then I guess it's not much of a benefit for you. But most people want to walk because we're human beings. So we're like kind of like automatically normalizing walking. Like that's just kind of an aspect of our lives, right? So most people want to walk. Most people don't want to have pain and most people don't want to smell bad. And they also don't want to have to deal with all the problems of being fat. Like, you know, taking up two or three extra seats that they shouldn't have been able to. And, you know, communicating with other people and not looking like, you know, I don't know, dude, like bubble bath from SpongeBob. Yes, there are tons of benefits. But I guess if you don't deem those as benefits, which is actually kind of ridiculous, I don't know if she's actually saying that those are not benefits, then fine, you can say they're not benefits. But for 90% of the, 99% of the human population, they are benefits. To lose weight and to have all that stuff bestowed upon you, yeah, it's great. Presume Walking is great, can you believe it? Having the ability to use one's legs accurately is a benefit. It is a good thing, by the way. Guess what I did today? I was on the beach and I got a little bit of a tan, guys. Look at the tan. Ooh, I know a lot of people have been saying it for a long time. They go, David, you are very pale and you are very pasty. You look like Casper or other things like a marshmallow or I don't know, dude. People have said a lot of different things about me. Like, I'm very white. And I understand that. I am very white. So, I decided to take the initiative and go outside in the sun, which is crazy, by the way. I almost couldn't have, I couldn't even believe it when the sun hit my skin. It was like, Sss. but I went to the beach today and I got a little bit of a tan. I did put sunblock on, obviously, uh, like 70 FPS or whatever the fuck the number was. It was a high number. So, I should be good. I shouldn't be getting melanoma. At least, I hope I don't. Um, pray for me. And I think I got a little bit tanner. I mean, do, what do you guys think? Like, is it tanned? Am I tanned a little bit? A little, just a little bit, right? A little bit? I do tan, by the way. I know a lot of people think that because I'm white, I burn. I don't burn. I mean, maybe if I did, if I was like really hot, it was like 95 degrees out today, but I was I right. Like even around other black people, I've noticed this. I am better in, in hotter temperatures than most black people. Like the amount of times I've been around a black dude and they go, man, it's hot, dog, man. I cannot believe how hot it is, dog. And I'm like, and they go, man, are you hot, dog? And I'm going, nah, man, I'm good, dude. I'm like really awesome, actually. I, I'm not, I'm barely hot. And they're sweating like crazy, but I'm good. Like 90 degrees, I'm barely sweating. I think my internal body temperature is like very equalizing according to wherever I'm at. So like in the wintertime, I'm pretty fucked because I'm a skinny ass person. So like I don't have very good temperature control. But in the summertime, I'm like really good, dude. Like I, listen, can you believe this? My melanin capacity is almost zero, obviously, but I am still almost all the time better than black dudes who have a lot of melanin capacity at intaking of the temperature. <laughs> Beating racism, right, dude? Or whatever you want to say, dude. I don't know. Snow bunnies galore. I mean, all of the wonderful things that's happened to them now that they have a smaller body. And sometimes, like, if you were like me, reading uh, magazines with these stories in and being like, oh my God, it's so amazing that they are now able to be a good parent because be a parent because they can run around with their kids and I, I i can't even believe you're i can't even believe you're making a joke about that like oh you're a good parent because you can like run around with your kids do you not think that's like important did did you are you really sitting here mocking that as if that's like a crazy idea oh running around with your kids who wants to do that who wants to have quality time with your kids oh, not me that's a good thing by the way you know that like going out and going places and throwing balls and 
running and doing other activities with your kids is fun. I don't know why you think that's not fun. Maybe because you're spending most of your day just sitting down and like looking at the wall and then talking about how depressed you are at your weight, but somehow convincing yourself that it's not bad. Maybe that's just what you do. But dude, <laughs> it's a great thing to have children and actually be able to keep up with them and be in your child's life accurately. What are you talking about? What does this have to do with the before and after picture? What is this projection right now? Where are you going? Is this really like something that you feel insecure about and you're like trying to conflate it somewhere or like trying to connect the dots somewhere to try to make it seem like, uh, what are we even talking about right now? Whatever, bro. Let's hear what she has to, to say. To be a good parent, but be a parent because they can run around with their kids and feed their kids healthy food and, and they can... Uh, it, it, keep their partner happy and they can do they're so they're so happy at work and they're i mean you're literally just naming off benefits right now and, and you're acting like it's crazy i don't know what the fuck you're talking feeding your kids healthy food uh what are you running around your kids who wants to do that uh, uh, gross <laughs> making their partner happy ah who wants that that's terrible who does uh, i don't need that making my husband happy nope being more attractive to my to my wife Ew, gross. Don't want to do that. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Yes, I want to be attracted to the person that I'm with. Yes, I want to be able to run around with the children that I produced from my nutsack. Yes, obviously, these are things that are incentivized and feeding your kid healthy food. I don't even know how the fuck you can even make a joke out of that. What are you talking about? As opposed to what? Getting fucking chicken nuggets and, and macaroni and cheese all day? Yes, it is what the fuck are you doing right now what is this video what is, what why are you going off so hard about things that are literally important it, keep their partner happy and they can do they're so they're so happy at work and they're oh my god and by the way she's like a pr coach so like that means that you can hire her and she'll imbue your company or whatever your work establishment is with fat training or fat inclusivity and teach you how to delicately arrange yourself around fat people aka fat people eggshells i have a i have a theory called fat women eggshells sorry not fat women black women eggshells because i've been around office environments and i've been around black women and i've been around other people right and it always kind of seems like when you are in these environments with there's like one black woman right it almost kind of seems like whenever that black woman walks in the room like everybody looks over at her and they go "Ooh, let's change the subject because they don't know if that subject that they were just talking about even if it was something like crazy like oh yeah my son like fruit my son likes fruit roll-ups or like my husband two nights ago i gave him that sloppy meat sandwich and i put a fruit roll-ups around his dick and i gave him that double slaughtering or whatever even something like that they would consider that might be offensive to that black lady, so they just completely stop talking about it altogether, and they annex her from the conversation. I've seen it copious amounts of times, and it really sucks because obviously black women are just like me or you, except obviously they have weird hair and they can do like literally anything with it. So it's really, really jarring to see like people literally negating other people from conversation because they're afraid that they might get fired, sued, or other things might transpire because they might offend that black person in a particular type of way. And the same thing here. If you're telling me that you need fat training to ensure that the fat people within your company or whatever work environment you have are treated fairly, I'm going to be scared. I don't know if I say anything correct. Like, what if I'm like, hey, um, can you help me like walking this this thing over to the this other place uh can you do that and then they would consider that to be like why would you say that dog why would you say i can't walk it over there is because i'm big as hell man like oh no i was just saying because i thought you know it's there I, you know like i don't know bro and now i'm getting fired because i said that fuck fuck now i'm fired dude because i made a kind of implica implication that he might have been fat and that he may not be able to walk whatever this item is i don't know like a carpet over to jeffrey's house i don't know dude the point i'm making is i got fired okay it sucks be, uh, because of the fat training because of the fat training that's who she is by the way and they look so good and, true oh this is who they were meant to be all along and look how bad they used to look true um the thing is uh, i'm already uh, you know you list all these great things obviously you say them in a condescending way to make it seem like it's crazy but then you go the thing is what is the thing is when i see before and after pictures not that i go seeking them out but sometimes they'll pop up on Instagram search and I'll be like get rid of that shit immediately Terrible that just shows me that you are an intel in a very intolerant person and you're not willing to look at it from the other side man 
I would love, I would love to have a conversation with any of these people that it is actually insane the amount because like obviously they don't want to have these conversations because there's no incentivization for them because if they literally lose that conversation or that argument or whatever that may be they their whole life for some of these people binges on that they're very fat fat non-fat phobic or whatever the hell so even if you if you beat them in a conversation or argument they they lose their whole career or their livelihood because of that so there's like no incentive for them to actually go outside their boundaries and communicate with other people about why they think whatever they think and it's really really crazy because there is a lot of value in discovering other people's ideas and opinions on certain things and maybe even picking up some other facts because people as it turns out they stop learning, okay? Like if you're in your own career and you've been doing that for a long, a, a prolonged period of time and you're very secure in that, that's good for you. You don't want to learn anything outside of that, which is fine. By the way, it's completely fine for people not to want to learn. But it's really interesting if you're one of these people that is supposed to be like an influencer that is supposed to tell other people the truth or disclose certain pieces of information as like a better ideology, it's really important to understand how the other person thinks so that way you can dismantle it and prove why yours is the more beneficial side. If you don't know why the other side is like worse or better then you suck you suck perpetually so you should be 100 percent always trying to learn especially if you're in these positions because otherwise how do you know that you're correct if you've never heard the other side and you're literally hurting other people because you're telling this information as if it's like the gospel or it's like the the information that nobody nobody else should look up anything else it's sad but like i said they're not going to go into other people's like conversations or have outside discussions with people because if they did they could literally lose their careers and this woman especially who's a fat pr person yeah they would 100 percent lose their career where's the value in this person after that um what i see is someone like it's i feel like i'm mystic meg if you're british you know who mystic meg is she's like a uh a fortune teller that would go on saturday night tv just before the lottery numbers were announced and be like if you've got number two, you're feeling lucky. Um, okay. If you have hair, you might win. Um, so I feel like Mystic Meg when I see these after pictures, because then I can see the after after in my mind. I know what is going to happen because statistics tell me what is. Yeah, they're going to regain the weight or whatever, dude. You know what I really find interesting about these people is that they'll go on and on about how if you lose weight statistically, you'll be more likely to gain it back. And I always think. Okay, let's say hypothetically that you did lose the weight and then you did gain it back. But within that time of you losing the weight, you kept it off. And then also you got to account for the weight loss journey. You became progressively healthier as a consequence of losing that weight. Like you were unhealthy, you were up here unhealthy, but then you decided to lose weight progressively, progressively, progressively. And as you decide to lose weight, the, the further down you go, that's more healthy, more healthy, more healthy, more healthy until you hit that pinnacle of this is where I want to be. And maybe you stayed there for a little bit, month, two months, three months, a year, two years, five years. I've heard people say, five to ten years if you gain back that weight that's what they usually talk about five to ten years which in my opinion five years is great if you were fat for your entire life and you lost weight and then you stayed that weight off for five years good job oh my god that's amazing so anything anything like any of this going down here and sustaining even if you did gain back the weight it's still okay because at least you tried at least you actually kept the weight off for a good amount of time because that means you gain some health back on your life on your lifespan that means you have a little bit more to give in your life and that's really really powerful especially if you have people around you your family members your children your husband your wife these people are literally around you 24 7 to to, to, to they all look at you as a responsible human being to take care of them to do stuff for them and i get it like maybe you don't want to do stuff but the point i'm making is it's better to not be held back by stuff and be able to do things than it is to be held back so i think it's great if you did if you were able to lose that weight and you were able to keep it off even for a little bit of time i think it's still amazing good job but this should not be an incentive to, to like just not do it at all because like that just means that you just stayed unhealthy forever because the fear of losing that weight doing the work and then regaining it is worse than just not doing anything at all what the fuck kind of logic is that you can see the after after in my mind i know what is going to happen because statistics tell me what is going to happen is that they are going to be bigger than the before picture that they are going to be the same weight as the before picture because they cannot maintain that smaller body size. I, I think most of the time people are, like they don't understand what 
maintenance looks like for a lot of people. Like, if you were somebody that grew up and you were just used to eating these in large portion sizes, which most people in the West, that's really what it comes down to. Like, people just eat these crazy large portion sizes, have no idea what actual portion sizes are. So you train yourself progressively over time that these are the one, these are the portion sizes you need to eat. And then eventually you hit this point of like, fuck, I'm fat as shit because you weren't supposed to be eating that amount of portion sizes. It was realistically only supposed to be like half of that. And then you start eating like that and you realize like, like holy shit, for my whole life, I've been eating like a complete like sloth, you know, sloth from the fucking goonies because because you didn't know. And then you start, then you, you have to maintain that obviously. And it's very jarring to see other people that are eating like crazy amounts of calories and you want to eat crazy amounts of calories. You know, it's like being a gay man in a BBC fest. Obviously you want to gobble up as much dick as you possibly can, which is fine by the way. If you want to suck dick, it's fine. Not me personally. I would never fucking do that shit. You can do that. Not for me. I'm not gay. I would never indulge in the art of the male genitalia. I would never satisfy a man through the oral sensation of my mouth. I would never do that unless I was paid hefty for those particular, for those, for my lips, which I don't really have a lot of lips. As you can see, my lip capacity is diminished beyond belief. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I've kissed very melanated women before, and it is insane when those lips, like, you know, because blacker women have a little bit more of a lip, lip variety. Usually, whiter dudes have a smaller lip variety, and it's insane to have, like, these, these voluptuous lips around me, and I'm just like, I don't even understand. How do you live like this, right? Because, like, for me, this is difficult to even have this, but regardless, uh, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. I, I have no idea what we're talking about going to be the same weight as the before picture because they cannot maintain that smaller body size and so i see someone who is temporarily happy that's sad that's so fucking sad dude what the fuck are you even talking about right now temporarily happy so you're so you're agreeing that people that are fat as fuck are just never going to be happy because they're never thin enough to obtain the happiness oh man the freudian slip is insane probably fucking starving and death i don't think these people really understand that you're not supposed to be eating the amount of calories that you get like look if i don't know how big this woman is but i've seen some of her updated pictures where she's like actually kind of big she got to be at least over 250 pounds maybe even 300 pounds you're not supposed to be 300 pounds and in order to be eating that up in order to be maintaining that amount of weight you would need to eat a lot of food okay now, granted, she's a girl, okay? Girls need to eat a little bit less than men, and because they're shorter and they have less, they have less human space to take up, they, it, it's, it's usually harder because you're a smaller person and you're seeing all these other bigger people eat more than you and you want to eat as much as they do, but you just can't because it's not for you. And that sucks, but it is what it is. It's like... I get it, but you have to be eating a lot of food, and I understand that you think that eating anything less than whatever, whatever you're eating is starving. It's not. It's not. You can eat a lot of calories. You can eat a lot of food inside of 2,000 calories. You can eat a lot of food in 2,500 calories. You can eat a lot of food in 1,700 calories. I, not everything needs to be 4,000. Not everything needs to be 5,000. Everything needs to be 3,000. You can get a lot out of that 2,000 calories. I don't know why these people think that you're starving. You're not starving. You're just eating a little less. It's not starvation. Why do you keep saying it's starvation? It's not. Starvation would like be not eating for like five days. <laughs> what are you talking about? Desperate need of food, but you know, push, pushing all those feelings down because those feelings, you know, they're not positive. Um, what are you talking about? Do you think it's positive to sit there and go to KFC and order half the menu and then go home and suck the skin straight off the bones? Like your mouth itself was made out of acid? You think that is healthy? Pushing that down that they haven't <laughs> eaten um, food in a while. It's um, not a while. It's like, it's like two hours or three hours, dude. Is that a while to you? Like, do you, what, how often are you fucking eating? Because today I went like literally, I didn't even eat until like four in the afternoon all day. Do you think that's a while? Maybe, but like, it's okay. As human beings, we're, we're, it's okay to not eat like every five, 10, 20 minutes. Um, because their life is amazing now. And I always see it as temporary. And I always just have such empathy for them because I know in six months, 12 months, Two years. Two years is a long fucking time, dude. Two years with, with, with keeping that weight off. Good job. You did it. Down the line, they're going to be looking back at this time that they were temporarily thin and feel so deeply ashamed of what their body looks like now. This woman is saying a lot of things that I really emanate with. Like, I understand what she's saying. I really do. She's basically saying, why would you even decide to lose the weight? Because it's only temporary. And by the way, if you lose that weight and then you look at yourself years later and you realize that you were thinner there and you felt better there, but you can no longer lose that weight, you're failing to understand that like, some of these people will decide to keep that weight off for a very long period of time. Some people make this literally a lifestyle and it's a lot of people. 
And like I said, even if you were somebody that chose to lose the weight for a little bit of time, at least that little bit of time is still beneficial instead of just staying fat for the whole life. You're not a fat person, by the way. I want you to look up those like pictures of people that are skeletons and then the, the body size on top of it, like a normal person and a fat person. It is incredible, uncanny to see where people are and where they are when they're fat. It's insane. Okay. So like, I understand that you think that it's worse, but it's not worse. Okay. It's not, at least somebody's doing something about it. Instead of you just sitting here telling people don't even bother, even though you're literally going to receive benefits in your holy across the entire spectrum of your life, literally from your children, your person that you're with family and friends, work environment, literally being more anabolic in general, being able to walk, like not complaining as much anymore because you have less pains. Like it's literally all good. And there might be like one or two bad things, probably like I can't eat as much. Great. But you probably won't even be focusing on the food anymore because you don't need to because you have other hobbies. You do other things now like walk, like using your legs and not feeling pain in your knees perpetually. Yes. So like, yes, I understand eating is great, but you don't need to do it all the time. And judging from your idea of like, oh, you're, you're not, you're starving because I didn't eat for three hours. Then yeah, it probably makes sense for you since you want to eat all the time. But for most people, we're good. We I. And what they had for a fleeting moment. And they- Two years, a fleeting moment, dude. Oh, it's usually five years. Like they usually go five to 10 years, so. They shouldn't feel ashamed. No one should feel ashamed for putting on weight after a diet, or even if you're still on a diet, because our bodies are magnificent and are doing <laughs> wonderful things to keep our body weight at a place. Yeah, but like your body can be even more magnificent. The way I like to look at it is like if your body was a car, like you just bought a brand new 2024 or whatever the fuck, and it's a beautiful, amazing, spectacular car, but then you choose to stack on cinder blocks onto that car for no other reason than because you want cinder blocks on the car. That's it. You just didn't give a fuck for like four years and you just start aside, you just decided to stack cinder blocks on a car every year progressively, adding more weight to the car. It started out just two cinder blocks, but holy shit, two years later, the half the car is literally cinder blocks and is dragging on the fucking floor. And yes, it's wonderful that it can take you from one place to the next and it's still running, even though you get the check engine light and the flat tire on the back and the catalyst converter that was robbed from the Mexican guys two nights before. Yes, it's great. It can take you places. Why the fuck wouldn't you want your car to be maintained for as long as humanly possible and updated? Get good stuff on that car. Put a wrap on it. Make it look spicy and shiny. Get the rims done. I don't fucking know, dude. There's a whole bunch of shit you can do instead of progressively stacking weight to make it seem like that's going to do anything besides make the car worse. It doesn't make sense. You look at it like that, please. Anybody, look at it like that. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but it doesn't need to be. It shouldn't be. It should never have to be a one-to-one -one comparison. You should understand the, the point I'm making is in the same way of just uselessly stacking weight upon a car and ensure it and then making it seem like, oh, it's, it's still good. Yes, it's still good, but it's still, it's progressively ass. You're making it shitter and shitter and shitter every fucking day. It's the same thing with your body. You could be making your body delicioso, amazing, optimized in many ways. Instead, you're sitting there packing useless weight that's literally doing nothing besides hurting it. Okay, whatever, dude. That it's happy with our set point range which 400 pounds 400 pounds happy happy range our set point range is a kind of a uh 10 20 pound range that our body likes to be in and once it falls out of this range then it's like no let's get back to where so like is my natural set point range like fucking 350 oh 350 to like 340 330 370 360 ish something like that is that what you're saying hogwash bullshit nobody should be around that way even these like professional ifbb pros who are literally dying at 43 because they progressively overload their bodies with tons and tons of anabolics like yes it's not a good idea to maintain 300 pounds year round all the time progressively it's not good it's not good no matter who you are is not good okay so if your argument is that your natural set point is 300 pounds or more suck me okay that's a bullshit ass point like to be um yeah so i feel like i can see the see the future and it's just what's, the, what's your future can you can you see your future tell me about your future temporary and so those good feelings of confidence of happiness feeling proud of your body is most likely going to be temporary. This woman is sad. Um, it's just a snapshot in time. This woman is so sad, dude. Can you imagine somebody saying that? Like, you're only gonna feel good for like two or three years, so why even bother? I mean, yes, it's gonna feel good, and it's gonna feel great, and you know, you might feel good enough to maintain that for like your entire life, but don't even try because 
you're probably not going to be able to maintain. It's the most pessimistic view you can possibly have on something. It is actually terrible, evil information. If you want to lose weight, you can do that. I believe in you. You can do it. Felix, he thinks you can do it. Davina thinks you can do it. You can do it. It's possible and it's maintainable, okay? You're not supposed to be 250. You're not supposed to be 300 pounds. It's not plausible to maintain that weight for your entire life and think that it's not going to negatively affect you in some way. And that could literally just be your weight on your knees feeling not good, your ankles feeling not good, or picking up a disease or illness because your body's per being perpetually taxed all the time because you're so fat that it's trying to keep you alive all the time and it's taxed on all these areas that it's going to slack off in the other ones. I want you to take a moment to imagine you're a successful shoe salesperson for 17 years and one day your boss comes and tells you you have six weeks to lose 35 pounds or you're fired or you're asked to get a certificate from the doctor to prove that you're not addicted to food in order to keep your job or during the pandemic you're a nurse and told sorry we don't have PPE in your size, so I guess you're just meant to expose yourself to COVID. I really think that these people are so incredibly privileged to where they have to, they have to blame all of their problems on everybody else. And somehow they think they are valid in making that decision. Sometimes when you are employed at a particular establishment that you are not guaranteed to have that job unless you can perform certain adequate functions. So like for instance, proving that you're a healthy individual that can lift certain sizes or whatever the fuck. Some jobs are not as taxed. Some jobs are like, oh yeah, we'll just hire you, whatever. You look fine. You look like a fantastic specimen of human being. And that's awesome. But other jobs, yes, you will be required to show that you can do particular things. It's like, you know those cameramen at Mori Povich, how they like always, you know, they're running behind those women that are screaming and yelling and screaming and all that stuff. You have to be very fast to be one of those guys, right? Obviously, they're probably going to be having like track meets and they're going to be hiring the fastest camera guy who can stabilize the most cameras with as short amount of time as possible, right? I don't know what the job requirement on that is, but you get what I'm talking about. Certain jobs will require you to have certain things. And I'm sorry that they don't make one size fits all things that are not even fitting you. Can you imagine having a problem like that? Like you're so fat that you can't even fit one size fits all stuff. It's probably a good thing if you're a very, if you have a very big penis, because that's like a super flex. Like when it comes to condoms, you know, most condoms are like one size fits all. Like most condoms will fit most people. Um, obviously not for me because most condoms like, I mean, what am I even going to put my penis on? Like, I guess Mount Everest. Like, I guess I can mount it there. But like, even then it would probably, I guess maybe like four of my pubic hairs will be covered by Mount Everest. It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is it is a very, very disgustingly privileged take to sit there and go, they don't make masks big enough for me. You need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. Why do you think that the world should be catering to you? If you're so fat that normal size things don't fit for you anymore, it is your decision to stay that way. These are all real stories. And, and by the way, that makeup shade is not for you. Not for you, dude. That red makeup, that overline, dude, nah, nah. This is what's known as anti-fat bias. If you are passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I love I love the diversity, equity, and inclusion because it sounds nice, doesn't it? Like, can you imagine, like, oh, yeah, I'm a diversity, equity, and inclusion coach. And you go, like, oh, that sounds great. What do you specialize in? And they go, fat people, big people, big, voluptuous, massive people that can't fit anything. People that that deserve everything honestly that deserve the entire world to cater to them to give them all of the good stuff and then tell them that they're beautiful and amazing even though they huff and puff after walking two steps from their desk over to the printer machine those people and by the way that's fat phobic to have them walk from the from their desk to the printer machine reduce it you are the printer machine have that have you wheel the printer over to that better yet have them work from home have no no option for them to come into work because we it's fat phobic for them to drive or walk upstairs or do things to get to work that's fat phobic guys oh my god you're fat phobic for thinking that stop it and you have not touched on the topic of anti-fat bias then i have a training that i think that you're gonna like it's called dismantling anti-fat bias from the workplace and it's happening on Wednesday, the 12th of June. Oh, we missed it. Oh no, we missed it. Maybe we'll go over it. I think she does say that there was like a prior recording of it or something. 12 p.m. PSD. And yes, we have a replay if you can't make that time. And this training is for company leaders and DEI professionals. 
or anyone who just wants to do right by people in bigger bodies. See, like, this is insane. You know, like, okay, look, I understood it when it was like, be dudes were really, really sexual in the workplace and they thought women were just like glorified coffee machines i understand that or dishwashers obviously we need some sexism training right guys stop slapping women on the butt cheeks for like yeah good job that's amazing even though most guys do that already with men it's gay by the way i don't care what anybody says i know when you play basketball or like you know when you play um baseball i, re I literally remember this when i was in little league and I remember my coach literally saying like, okay guys, um, yeah, when you're like going by, it's okay to smack the other kids on their butt cheeks because that's how you let them know they did a good job. And I remember like literally at the time thinking like, so nobody else is going to say that's gay. Like I know that we're all like seven years old or whatever. And like, it's not, you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's fine. Like I get it in the sense of like boys and girls at that age are basically the same, but like, dude, um, they're, that's gay, right? Is that not gay? Is nobody else going to say that's gay? Like, do we do that as adults? Like, Hey bro. Oh man, you really filed that spreadsheet real fucking great let me suck you off real quick wow let me just uh, 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 let me suck you down like it's just crazy that did actually happen i remember literally grabbing on all the other fucking i'm like seven years old dude and like everybody else was doing it i'm not gonna be the weird one out that didn't grab everybody else's fucking butt cheeks dude i don't fucking know you know what's really weird too is that the coaches like dude you would have like two or three or four coaches on your team they would do it too they would grab the other coaches butt cheeks man isn't that fucking crazy it's just like 45 years old grabbing other men's butt cheeks that they were also like 45 years old that's really gay am i wrong that's gotta be like that's got to be like your excuse when you're deeply closeted and you're a married man, but you don't want to let your wife know that you're gay. So instead of like going out of your way to like feel the sensation of another man's penile incision into your mouth, you instead go to Little League and you fill out the other coaches. Like so I'm convinced some of them went deep. Some went into the butt cheek. I don't know, man. Whatever, dude. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I know there were some kids that tried to do that, though, which is really crazy. Like they would stop and grab and they would just sit there for a minute, look at you while they were doing it, and then they would progress crazy crazy bro whatever bro in the workplace click the link in my bio or if there's a link around here and i would love to see you there at the training if you would like a discount uh, for a price that contributes towards economic justice i need that shit to be free yeah damn you're really one of these people too that sits there and goes we need we need a discount for epic <laughs> towards economic justice Dude, you're at SJW for money too? Really? How do you make any money at all? You remember that you remember that company that was like, hey, um, if you guys are men, there's a man tax. So like if you want to come in and like if you don't want to pay it, it's fine. But you know, women are gonna get a deduction, by the way. And then like the company like shut down because like nobody was trying to pay it if they didn't have to pay it. Yeah. So like, are you just gonna like give free courses because economic justice? I'm poor. Give me all I need it all. Matter of fact. <sighs> I'm really poor. Like I'm, I'm really poor. Matter of fact, woman, uh, I, I'm a fierce fatty. I'm a probably need, I'm probably going to need your bank account. If I'm being honest, like I just, I think I probably really need that. Cause like obviously economic justice. So, um, whatever you got in your bank account, I'll, I guess I'll take that. I mean, I'll take whatever the fuck. I mean, I guess whatever. Hey, what kind of car do you drive? I'll take that too, I guess. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> whatever you got, really. What's in your fridge? <laughs> I'll take that too, I guess. <laughs> I'll take whatever you got. I mean, you're just giving it away at that point, right? Because you're giving the deductions based off of economic justice. So I'm probably going to need a deduction, all of it. <laughs> I'll take it all. All of it. Give it to me. I need that shit. Dumb. Then just send me a message and I'll get you a discount code. Bro, why wouldn't everybody be doing that if that's the case? Make sure you check that link down below to get a deduction. Just have the deduction then if that's the case. Just why the fuck you gonna DM me for a discount code? Just have the discount code there then or just lower the price. That's dumb as fuck. Let's talk about- Cause then other people are gonna feel like they got gypped, right? Can you imagine somebody paying full price and then the other guy next to him like, hey man, oh man, you guys see that fucking fierce fatty? That fierce fatty, uh, that seminar they did about like equity, equality, and systemic justice. Like, oh yeah, it was great, dude. Oh, it was so great that I hit that woman up and I got a 25% deduction. What? 25% deduction? Yeah, man, all you gotta do is hit her up. Wait, I paid full price. I paid full, full fucking price. Full fucking price for that shit. Like people are gonna get upset, dude. Just have the, just have the discount code already applied. Being worried about other people's opinions. So this is, um, massive one. Worrying about what other people think of us is completely fine for the most part. Like, 
do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you not worry about what they think about you? Do you not worry about how they look upon you? Do you not feel like maybe you should be applying deliciousness to yourself to ensure that they still find you attractive? Do you not uh, do you not dress to get the job that you're performing for? Like for instance, job interviews. Do you not like obviously you're not going to show up dressed like CJ from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas with a wife beater blue jeans and fucking Timberlands, right? You're not doing that. You're going to show up. You're going to wear your boat shoes. You're going to wear your blue, blue button up and you're going to be nice. You're going to say, hi, sir. Hello, sir, or whatever. And you're going to try to get the job, right? We impress each other every single day. It's literally what we do because we live in a society. I know we live in a society. And because we live in a society, we appeal, we, we appeal to other people. So other people's opinions based off of you are really valid given if you're working in an establishment or you have any type of like social credit. Yes, you're gonna need to apply for other people. I don't know if I can tell you. I'm sorry that it works like that, that you have to, that we live with other human beings and human beings have job opportunities or even like other opportunities. Like if you wanna go to a party, it turns out that you have to be a nice person. I don't know. Like, I don't know why people think that like, it's a bad thing to be nice or to be attractive to another person. It's fine. It really is actually fine. It's great actually yes you look great yes you look very good you smell good too wow you look smell and are delectable today i think the number one it's really interesting how this person like tries so hard to make it seem like everything they're saying is really smart when in reality most of the shit they're saying is like surface level okay but most like even beyond the surface like if this was like a sheet of ice but it, it's like i don't know dude it's like 44 degrees outside and things are kind of cold but then like it's only a very thin layer of ice to where if you step on it, it cracks instantly. It's like that. It, and it melts too right away because there's water underneath it. That's what it's like. Like all her takes are like that very thin layer of, uh, of, of ice. And then everything else below it is like, what the fuck are you talking about? The barrier that people have when it comes to doing this work. I think that if everyone lived on a desert island... On you would not live if you were on a desert island. I don't know why so many people use this like, oh, if I was on a de desert island, you would wear whatever you want or do whatever you want. Yeah, because you wouldn't have any fucking options. You would be like, who's that one dude, bro? Forrest fucking Gump, dude. Uh, Tom Hanks with Wilson, having sex with Wilson and shit, the, ba the baseball, the basketball, whatever the fuck that shit was, and dress like a homeless man because you don't have any other priorities. Yeah, fucking duh. You know what? This is such a dumb take. If you lived by yourself, obviously nothing would apply to you because you have no standards and you don't understand what is and what is not okay anymore because there are no standards anymore. Obvious fucking leap. If I was on a desert island and there was nobody else there, I'd be walking around swinging dick and sucking coconuts all fucking day because why the fuck does it matter anymore? Nobody's here to judge me. What the fuck are you even talking about? Yes, of course. I don't, I, I don't even understand the point of this fucking video, dude. If pe like, you, are you basically saying that because other people have standards on how you should look and dress that that's fucked up and that we should get rid of those because why? I, I don't know exactly. I... On their own. And we didn't have to think about how others perceived us. We would just be like, oh, yeah, my body's cool. You know, thanks, body, whatever. What when the fuck are you talking about, dude? You need your body. If you're on a desert island and there's no, like, infrastructure or anything like that and you're just like, oh, wow, thanks, body. You're so great. You can't be fat. You know that, right? Like, it's, it's like, literally, impro it's, like, the most impractical thing to be overweight because, like, for all of time, you do realize that we didn't have, like, any type of infrastructure. So you had to, like, navigate throughout the world and kill, like, woolly mammoths and shit and suck the backsides of, like, I don't know, will the beasts and shit to get sustenance. Like, you do realize you had to hunt and shit. So, if you want a desert island, you would not even be fat. You do realize that, right? Like, it would be the most impractical thing ever. So, you would literally have to be thin. It's a privilege to have infrastructure because that means that you can be fat. You do understand that, right? Like, government, society, infrastructure, that all facilitates you being fat. You do understand that, right? Like, you would not be fat if we weren't under a capitalistic government. You understand that? Can we just talk about that for a second? Like, I understand that you think that you wouldn't be and that it's, like, terrible, but, yeah, you, would be, you wouldn't be fat if, that, if these things weren't occurred. Like, flat out. Just, <laughs> just fucking, what the fuck am I even doing? Why am I even disclosing this? Like, it's obvious, obvious, but she doesn't see it. But it's the thought of the way that we are perceived and are standing in society, which is all bullshit, by the way. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Are you, are you really trying to sit here and say that the way that we okay so there are hierarchies involved at the way that we the way that we judge each other obviously most people look at joe biden as like a superior human being not in the sense of like 
moral standing but because he's the president he holds a big position of power so we look upon him differently that you would look at like a homeless guy right obviously like we're the same in terms of biologically but most people are going to look at like joe biden as like a, oh yeah it's a man of a great constitution whatever the fuck i don't know but if your point is like we don't like that and like there shouldn't be hierarchies what is the alternative like obviously not everybody can be equal because that's impossible because there are going to be people that do things more so than other people and we judge those things to be inferior or in inferior or better right better or worse depending on what they do like for instance if a guy kills somebody guess what most people are going to look at that guy and go well he's a bad guy but in your world you would determine that to be not good because we're judging people based off that thing so that's fucking stupid. Like, do you see how easy it is to, like, switch up your logic? Like, oh, you shouldn't be judging people outwardly because that's really bad. But if we didn't do that, then, like, we wouldn't look upon, like, murderers and people that commit crimes as bad people. In the same way that, like, somebody does philanthropy or, like, donates a lot of money or does good things for their community. Like, they wouldn't get the credit they deserve. Like, what the fuck are you talking about right now? It's such a fucking dumbass take. What the fuck are you even talking about? Like, even on the, even on the front of, like how people dress like how you how you choose to present yourself in society then you would just be okay with people just walking around with dick and balls just casually just fucking slit and sliding slopping you know penis on the floor or whatever dude throwing it over their fucking shoulders like it's fucking nothing like you would consider that to be okay and you would also compare consider people just dressing around like medieval knight which would actually be pretty fucking cool to just casually walk around with like medieval medieval knights that's something we can definitely agree on like if you want me to dress up like as the mandalorian or like jango fett from star wars uh, we can have that conversation but like i'm totally against people just walking around with their meats hanging out like i don't really want to see dick a lot not personally i don't even like seeing mine sometimes because it's really jarring to see how big it is because i'm really upset that other people don't have as big as capacity as i do it's actually really sad to know that there are men out there that are lacking so much financial so, so much financial big meatedness and i'm just sitting here wow ginormity it's insane um but i you see how easy it is to like switch that up like it's such a dumb take it's such a stupid fucking dumb take i can't even believe that she's talking about this standing shit. in society which is all bullshit by the way that stops us from doing a lot of stuff like killing people like murder you know like robbing stores like who would have known that social implications have an it who would have known that like you know laws and regulation and understanding that there is a moral compass that we have to follow is bad oh <laughs> fucking bad what are you fucking talking about what do you want people like murder people what are you talking about in life because we feel a deep deep sense of shame when you murder people yes true you think that's bad? Because when we think of other people judging us negatively. Which is good, because if other people think you're a bad person for killing somebody, and that incentivizes you not to kill somebody, that's good. That's a good thing. Good job for letting other people judge you in a way that could benefit you. Yes. Not always. If you have lower confidence, the deeper that that fear and that shame is going to be. And of course, we all want to be liked. We all want to be loved. We don't want to be the villain and have everyone being like, ooh, boo. You're yeah, about man, you know how crazy it is to say this? Because I don't even think she really realizes that the villain are literally... The villains in our lives are like the Jeffrey Dahmers, the fucking guys that serial killers, or like the dudes that do commit those crimes that we don't want to talk about on YouTube. But you know what I'm talking about? Like those guys, yes, they are the villains. And I don't know why you're trying to defend those people. Like, I, I mean, I, I know that's directly not what you're talking about, but by what you're saying, the implication is literally that. So what the fuck are you talking about? A person and you're really horrible. Like, it's natural to want that. But how does anybody hire this woman? Like, how does anybody listen to these like seminars and go, wow, this person is so well informed. This person is so incredibly deep. They know exactly what they're doing. This woman's literally dumb. Like, this is some basic bitch take. It's the most surface level shit you could possibly think of. And it doesn't even make sense in practice, let alone like in even in speaking like her saying this stuff literally doesn't even make sense. I could even imagine what it would be like if in practice this shit is literally uh, unsustainable. It's not real. None of the shit she's saying makes any sense. But that that feeling about how other people view you to be debilitating in your life which might be a good thing if you're trying to kill someone and that's debilitating to you like oh, i'm not gonna do it anymore because people think it's bad that is a problem okay so <laughs> someone with lower confidence is so moved by the thought of others judging them negatively that they don't do things that they want to do 
what the fuck are you talking about? It's some, it's, it's not a good thing to have low confidence in things that really matter. So like, for instance, asking that girl out, getting that job opportunity, going to the gym, I don't know, doing the things that you really want to do. But it's really good if you're a fucking murderer, or it's really good if you want to eat a high calorie meal. It's really good when we have, like, look, I'm not a fan of bullying, but sometimes we need to shame. Like, it's obvious if somebody does something wrong, it's okay to look at that person and shame, shame, shame. Because if they do something wrong and it's bad, what the fuck you want? Like, it's obviously not good. So, like, if, you're, if your argument here is, like, it's never good no matter what, are you fucking dumb? Are you stupid? Or wh what the fuck is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? That is a problem. That The way you think is literally an issue. And maybe she's not thinking about it exactly like this, but that is literally the same branch. Like, if she's saying it's wrong to judge people like this, and, like, the branch is, like, six inches, the rest of the branch is, like, serial murderers, people that fucking overconsume, like, in corporate greed. <laughs> it's, like, all of that is the rest of the branch. And she doesn't see that, though. And what it is, is really that they hold other people's comfort above their own what the fuck are you talking about man in certain circumstances like whatever happiness let me repeat that because it's important when you are so worried about other people you didn't say anything profound i don't know why you have to repeat it you didn't say shit profound that'd be like me going guys if you are gay it's okay to suck dick i'm gonna say it one more time okay i know it was i know that was powerful i know it was I know it was fucking insane to say that, but I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to slow it down because I know that it's going to be hard for a lot of people to hear this, but I, I'm okay. I'm okay with saying this again. Okay, listen up really closely. If you are gay, homosexual, men lover, it is okay to indulge with your mouth. It's okay to feed your mouth with male genitalia, big girthy meats in your mouth, meat massaging with your tongue. Your lips meet. Synonymous. <laughs> You're welcome. People's opinions and how people might judge you. You are worried more about someone else's comfort than you are about your own happiness. My happiness involves murder and eating large quantities of ice cream until I fall out of bed because... I can't move anymore. Any, it's just like, that's my, that's dumb. Obviously, obviously I don't believe any of that shit, but you know what I'm saying? Like that, it, can you imagine if somebody said that and you're like, oh, that's what you're, that's your comfort. You should have that. What the fuck are you talking about? No, no, no. Like you could do a lot of things. I can go to the bank right now and get a loan for like $70,000 and go to Tesla and buy a new Tesla. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not dumb. I'm not trying to go into debt over this fucking car. The point I'm making is just because you can do something and like you, you want to do it doesn't mean you should. Doesn't mean you fucking should. What the fuck? There are a lot of opportunities in my life that I could have took, but I looked at and went, no, that's probably not the best. And really, who are we thinking about when we're worried about people who, who judge us? Your mom, your fucking dad, the society at large, the police. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Uh, yourself? I would hope. Like, when you eat that fucking 17 patty burger from Wendy's, that you look at yourself and you go, ah, damn, I shouldn't have done that. Any of those fucking people, bro? What are you talking about? It's like, you know, Becky from high school, who was a complete bitch anyway. Whoa, and she's gonna whoa, be we're talking a little bit. Becky was a nice person. Can we just agree on that? Becky was nice. I'm sorry that she thought that you were fat. She's on Facebook, and if you put a new picture of yourself on there and, and you look bigger than you did a couple of years ago, will Becky from high school be like, mm -hmm, look at her, she's got fat. You know, it, are these people that we actually care about? And if they are people that we care about... What the fuck was that? She's pre Is that like a... Is, is Becky real? Was Becky a real person? Did Becky say that to you? Huh, fierce fatty? <laughs> um, why the fuck are they being such knobs and ju judging us negatively? What the fuck are you talking about? You can't control how other people think. Why do you want to control how other people think so bad? What the fuck are you doing? You can only control how you think and how you react to shit. What the fuck? I've done that, dude. Okay, listen. If you ever... 
I'm gonna keep it a solid buck with you, okay? You know what I love to do, and I'm gonna say it. Well, I'm gonna say it. it's a problem, but it's also funny as hell. When I'm with you or whoever I'm with, and I'm walking down the street. I create stories. I'll just start. I'll just start voicing out that person right in front of me. It's hilarious. I love doing it. I love creating stories in my head about what's going on with that person and what they're saying and how they're communicating with each other. It's awesome. It's so hilarious to me because I make stories and I change the voice and I do a whole bunch of stuff and it could be seen as disrespectful. But guess what? The person that the person that I'm making fun of, the person that I'm talking about doesn't even know what's happening. You know why? Because they're like a block ahead of me and they're never going to hear me what I'm saying. OK, but the person that I'm with, we're having a fun time and you could determine that to be negative or fucked up or whatever and it probably is but fuck you i'm gonna continue to do it because i find it funny and hilarious and it's not negatively affecting really anybody so i understand that you don't like it that somebody thinks that you're fat and that it's probably negatively affecting you because you're insecure about it even though that's your insecurity and it doesn't really matter what other people think about you because why the fuck are you concerned with other people so much and you should be really concerned about yourself because it's obviously something you're insecure about so you should probably change it it all comes back to you it all comes back to you Stop trying to change what other people think and do it yourself. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody wants else nobody else wants to hold your hand. It's sweaty and moist. Ugh, gross. Anyway, guys. We're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all that stuff. I'd appreciate it tremendously. I love you. I care for you. You're so amazing. You smell so amazing today. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in umbrella or if you have an umbrella for umbrella emoji, you can put that down below too. And I appreciate it regardless because umbrellas are beautiful and amazing. And that's the one Rihanna song that I really like under my umbrella. Ella, Ella, eh, 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 eh. I really like that song and I really like you. I really like you. <laughs> I, <sighs> I really like you. And I'm not afraid to admit it. I have a deep infatuation with you. I cannot stop myself. I can't stop myself from liking you so much because uh, you just, you're just so amazing and you do so much great stuff. And I just can't stop from looking at you and glazing my lips with my tongue. I can't stop it. You're just so amazing and awesome all the time. And I love the way that your body is formatted and how you take care of it. And it's so great that your kneecaps are shaped the way that they are. And I love the way that your eyebrows are shaped too. You do them so well, even if you do nothing at all. I love the genetic outline that you were predetermined with. It's so amazing. It's so beautiful. It's so moisturized. It's so awesome. I love it. I love you. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff will be linked down below in the description of this video and the description of the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.